you were on the race, weren't you? Yeah. And the Mur de Bretagne in 2015 when Frug <laughs> <laughs> got the guy by the scruff of the. Who was it? It was uh, it was Vincenzo Nibali. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, so this is Froome all over. I mean, he's so diplomatic in his interviews and, like, when you had him on the phone the other day there. But, oh, he is ruthless when it comes to, to bike racing. Tell us about that day. It was at the Mur de Bretagne. There was a crash, Pete. Well, I don't know. You were probably towards the front of the race that day, I'm sure. And there was a crash that brought a lot of the big-name riders down. I don't think any of them were badly hurt. But the, the lead-up to it, it resulted in um, Vincenzo Nibali throwing a water bottle at Chris Froome. Yeah. That was the start, wasn't that was it? The and start. Th then what happened? Well, we were all a bit... No one really knew what was going on when we were on the bus at the end. Sort of, Dave Brailsford was stomping up and down the bus, and we were like, what's happened here? And then we finally found out Froome just crossed the line, went directly to... I think it was the Starna at the time, wasn't yep. it? Uh, yep. Went to the Starna bus and just walked straight on it. <laughs> <laughs> Not one single foot and just got Vincenzo Nibali apparently by the scruff of the neck, held him up against the wall on the team bus <laughs> and just had to out with him. And this is this is the frame that we don't see. And this is what's this is what's great about him. He's he doesn't beat around the bush when it comes to stuff like that. Amazing really, because the team bus I would imagine is sacred territory. I mean that's the one that's the one area that teams draw ranks and privates, uh, private individuals can shelter away from the wider world. You don't storm team buses. As well, it's a rule, like do you? going into someone's house that you don't know. It's like <laughs> <Burglary>. <laughs> it's your home. Yeah, it's it's and yeah, that's he showed some confidence doing doing that. But um, going back to just you know that's just how how stressful and how emotional the peloton can get and grudges they can go a long way in this sport going back to Peter Sagan himself with the incident with Mark Cavendish I think it was 2017 that famous crash that grudge went on for years like damn talking I think it was almost three years before they before they made up and actually when I joined the team on the first training camp we had in Mallorca we had a, a kind of team sort of the one meal we have out on the training camp and he had a few beers and Sagan actually got me to, he was like, oh, you're friends with, um, with Cav, yeah. I was like, yep, <laughs> where's this going? <laughs> and um, it, he actually got me to call him up and he wanted to, he was just, he was done with it. He was like, I want this over. He, he'd had enough, basically. And he got me to call Cav and, and they were on the phone for about a good half an hour. Wow. And I can't remember what was said, but basically Cav was just having none of it. And then he was, he, yeah, I don't think he was too happy that I called him the next day. <laughs> <laughs> one, of them, one of them moments where your phone rings and it's, it's Mark Cavendish and you're like, uh-oh, what's he going to say to me now? 